Hey YouTube, it's Eric. Uh, this is me a quick stream here. Just, I'm going to be this uh, information I wanted to include in my uh, recent video on the Jesuit connections to the Rockefeller Empire and how the Standard Oil Trust was modeled off of the Jesuit order. Uh, this just complements that the information in that video uh, very well. But right, right around this time in 1903, when the Rockefeller when the Rockefeller Empire was taking over the United States. And they've taken over the world with the world economy, really. You had this Archbishop of Chicago, James e. Edward Quigley. He made this announcement. And I'm going to show you. I have the original source document from 1903 here from the Chicago Tribune, May 5th, 1903. But uh, Archbishop Quigley literally says that when the United States of America rules the world, that the Cap the Roman Catholic Church will rule the world. And, he, and he, he boasted about this right at the time when the, Rock, uh, the Standard Oil Trust was taking over the United States. And again, if you haven't seen that video I did recently, I recommend you check that out. The Standard Oil Trust was modeled off of the Jesuit order. But uh, it's, it's interesting the timing. Again, the, 1903, this is when the Archbishop of Chicago chose to make this statement. And this is him here. He was actually Canadian born. He was born in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Uh, James Edward Quigley. He was the Bishop of New York and then Archbishop of Chicago. Uh, there's an uh, like Archbishop Quigley Preparatory Seminary named after him in Chicago, which is now a U.S. National Historic Site. <laughs> there it is there. This, uh, this has some pretty interesting uh, alumni, to say the least, like the Archbishop of New York during 9-11, uh, Cardinal Egan. Colonel Edward Egan went here. Another Egan that went to the seminary was Saul Alinsky's priest, <laughs> the Roman Catholic priest, puppet master of Saul Alinsky. And uh, Saul Alinsky is a big figure in the Democratic Party. Like uh, Jesuit Tess Hillary Clinton wrote her college uh, master's thesis on Saul Alinsky, I believe, something like that. And jo John Joseph Egan, the puppet master of Saul Alinsky, also marched with Jesuit puppet Martin Luther King. If you're unaware, Martin Luther King received three Jesuit honorary degrees, two or three, and yet and you can even see a photo of him with the Pope and the head of the Vatican Mafia, Vatican Bank, Archbishop Marcinicus, uh, who is deeply, like, Marcinicus was all over the, uh, the Sindona and Calvi banking scandals in the 1980s. <laughs> and you can see a photo of him with Martin Luther King. Uh, but the point is, like, there's some very interesting alumni at this Archbishop Quigley Seminary, which is now a U.S. National Historic Site. And the Archbishop Quigley boasted how in 1903, when the Catholic Church, or the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. It's interesting, too, that you got seven Roman Catholics now in the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court is a Roman temple. <laughs> yeah, the, the Catholics have a clear majority in the U.S. Senate. They have a majority in the U.S. Congress. A majority in all of the quote alphabet agencies. Uh, <laughs> there's Roman fasces in the U.S. House of Representatives. There's actually a plaque of two popes. If you're unaware of this, I'll just get to this here. Um, most Americans definitely don't know that the popes of the Inquisition are in the House of Chamber, the House of uh, Chamber, in the U.S. Capitol Building. <laughs> Yeah, the popes of the Inquisition. Look up the history of these popes: Innocent the Third and Gregory the Ninth. If you add Roman Hatton's book *Catholic Imperialism and World Freedom*, he quotes Gregory Ninth saying that the whole world must be like a fiefdom of the papacy. And then Innocent the Third uh, famously launched the the uh, ethnic cleansing of the Albigenses and the the Waldenses at that time. Launched the uh, Inquisition and the Crusades. <laughs> I say that they're in the U.S. House <laughs> in plaque form, and they're they're actually cited as being the uh, uh, models of American law, incredibly. And they also like they, they, you can you can see the whole collection. They have the King of Babylon, King Hammurabi, in plaque and form. They got a whole bunch of other Roman emperors, like Roman Emperor Justinian, is in plaque form. Again, the whole legal system that we're living under. The whole concept of a legal fiction is a Roman uh, law. It's Roman legal law. 
But, uh, but to the point being, the United States is clearly a fiefdom of the Roman Catholic Church at this point. And you had this archbishop bragging about this in 1903, that when the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. Here's the article here. See, I'm not making it up. The Chicago Daily Tribune. It's this article here on the right side where I'm highlighting Quigley as an optimist. And then I have the full article underneath here. Shout out. It was, uh, it was Johnny Cerucci who gave me this article through uh, newspapers.com a couple years ago. So shout out. To Johnny Cerucci for that. See, I'm just going to read this article. Let's take it into context. This is written right as the Rockefeller Empire is taking over the United States. So you got the Archbishop of Chicago, Quigley here. Quigley as an optimist. And he, quote, sees wonderful growth of Roman Catholic Church. Standing as the only man. Of, and so he was speaking at this uh, kind of sodality movement for like a female sodality within the Catholic Church. Uh, standing... The only, Stanley, the only man among 800 women, the Archbishop declares that he has been deeply impressed by the progressive spirit of the West, forecast the time when the Roman religion he represents will lead the world. <laughs> Again, just look at the Vatican Healthcare Conference that took place in May 2021. Look at the names of attendees at that Vatican Healthcare Conference. And you tell me that the Vatican isn't leading the world right now after looking at that huge list of influential speakers at the Vatican Healthcare Conference. <laughs> They're clearly running the world right now. Uh, <clears throat> since I have been, so this is a quote from Archbishop Quigley. Since I have seen the Western periarchical schools, he's talking about the Catholic schools in the United States. Since I've seen the Western periarchical schools, I have come to the conclusion that in 50 years, if things go on as I see they are going on at present, the Catholic Church will actually own the West. End quote. <laughs> They'll own the West. Well, think about this. Every single governor on a U.S. border state is Roman Catholic. Think that's a coincidence? <laughs> As the Jesuits are pushing this massive invasion of Catholic Hispanics coming over the border, every single governor on the southern border state is Roman Catholic? Huh. <clears throat> And you got groups like the Jesuit Kino Initiative, where the, the biggest advocates for illegal immigration. <laughs> uh, and actually, just interesting on that point, I was watching Tucker Carlson actually just rightfully called out that America is being invaded on the southern border on his show a couple of nights ago. But particularly, Tucker Carlson didn't bring in the Catholic angle of that invasion. But who knows? Maybe he'll get there. The Pope's NSA is uh, supposedly spying on Tucker Carlson now. <laughs> and if you aren't aware, I've covered this. The, the, the logo of the NSA, they admit the silver key in this logo represents the Pope's temporal power. So, so this is showing that Archbishop Quigley was correct. Like what he said, like what the United States ruled, became to rule the world order. The Catholic Church, therefore, became uh, the ruler of the world. Uh, but you see here, here's the logo of the National Security Agency. You see that this is the eagle. This is the Pope's silver key. You see, and that you see, this is the same silver key. This I above this, I show a papal crest of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Every pope gets his own crest. Francis has his own. You see, this is the exact same papal key. You can see the cross there. Um, you see here, this is the, quoting from the National Security Agency, and I link the sources here. The dexter and sinister talons of the bird clutch a silver key. The key in the eagle's talons representing the key to security evolved from the emblem of St. Peter the Apostle, the supposed first pope, and his power to loose and to bind. It also symbolizes the mission to protect and gain access to secrets. That's coming from the NSA's own website. They say that this key represents is the key to security. It's the emblem of St. Peter the Apostle. That's the first pope. I literally quote the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and you see here quoted that the Pope is the successor of St. Peter. <laughs> see, St. Peter and the rest of the apostles constitute a single ap ap apostolic college. So in like fashion, the Roman pontiff, Peter's successor, and the bishops, the successors of the apostles, are related and united to one another. So I was telling you right there that, that that key is the Pope's key on the NSA. You wonder why no one in the uh, quote-unquote alternative media talks about it. <laughs> Jesuit control runs very deep. Okay, but going back here to Archbishop Quigley. 
I'm just going to, uh, this video will be fairly short. I'm just going to read this article and sign off here. I wanted to just add, add this information to the video I did on uh, John D. Rockefeller a couple days ago. Well, absolutely, Ben. Tucker Carlson's definitely a gatekeeper. I just, uh, I just, I've never seen a, uh, it being called out as an invasion, which is, I, I've been saying that the Jesuits are invading the United States southern border with Roman Catholic immigrants for like three or four years now. So, but it's just, it, it's interesting to see Tucker use the, the word invasion. But again, predictably, he is a gatekeeper. He didn't bring up the Catholic and Jesuit angle to it. Like Jesuit Joe Biden, the current president, really wrote the foreword to Jesuit Leo O'Donovan's book titled Blessed Are the Refugees, which is a whole tract is advocating a mass Roman Catholic invasion of the U.S. Southwest. Uh, that same Jesuit Leo Donovan, you can see here in a photo with Bill Gates. <laughs> you can also see a photo of this, this Jesuit Leo Donovan with uh, pedophile Harvey Weinstein, Leo Donovan, who Biden wrote the foreword for his pro-immigration book, uh, was on the board of directors of Disney, joined the Disney board in 1996. <laughs> Look at that. And he, actually, he gave the invocation at Joe Biden's swearing-in ceremony on January 20th. So you can see, like... And if you look at a chart, like it, it, since Biden took office, there's literally a spike of hundreds of thousands of more uh, illegal immigrants are coming over the border, <laughs> all by design. <laughs> okay, so you see here, so, so, so Archbishop Greeley said the Catholic Church will actually own the West. So back to the Chicago Tribune, such was the optimistic declaration of Archbishop Quigley last month for the children of Mary's sodality at the Holy Name Parish School. Uh, Chicago Avenue and C Cass Street. The occasion was the reception given to the Archbishop by the members of the Sodality, and the prelate was the only man in a gathering of 800 women. The Archbishop was introduced in a brief speech by the Reverend John J. Code. I wonder if this guy was a Jesuit. The Reverend John J. Code, who then disappeared, leaving the Archbishop alone among the women of the Sodality. His opening words were devoted to a series of graceful compliments to his hearers. So here's, you see, here's more quotes from Archbishop Quigley. You see this, so the title is Fine Chicago as Represented. Uh, before I came to this city, I had heard that Chicago people were given to boasting. And uh, he said, Quigley, then continuing quote, now I fear I'm coming to be something of a boaster myself where Chicago is concerned. Since I had been here, I have found Chicago just as the boasters had represented it. It is true that I have seen little of the city. <laughs> so here you go. He hasn't even seen the whole city of Chicago. And he's, Boasting about it just kind of shows the um, the arrogance of the priesthood. But continuing, uh, they have kept me so busy up at my residence, I have not had the time to see Chicago. Why, I have hardly seen been downtown yet. I'm looking forward to the time when I'm going to go down into the city all alone and become lost in Chicago. However, I've had the opportunity to see a few of the churches and schools in the diocese, and I have gained some idea of what a magnificent big Catholic city Chicago is. <laughs> Again, if you look up the, the Chicago fires that took place in Chicago, it was the Jesuit church, you know, coincidentally, it was one of the only buildings that didn't uh, burn down in the fire in Chicago. <clears throat> the Haymarket riots which took place on May 4th, uh, a date of 54 numerology, Jesuit order equals 54, the, that took place in the Chicago area. And again, Chicago is a very Catholic city. All you have to look up is the Balbo Monument, which the Roman Catholic fascist dictator Mussolini gifted to city of Chicago in 1933. <laughs> An ancient Roman column that is approximately 2,000 years old, dating from 111 and 38 BC. It was taken from an ancient port town outside Rome by fascist Roman Catholic dictator Benito Mussolini, who signed the Lateran Treaty with the Vatican and gifted to the city of Chicago in 1933. Well, I, th I thought fascism was the enemy. Why, 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 is the, why is the city of Chicago accepting monuments from fascist dictators? And these monuments are Roman columns. You can see the Roman fascists all over the columns. <laughs> it's, uh, so this gift was to honor the transatlantic fight led by Italio Balbo, who is a fact. He was, uh, he was, Balbo is the heir apparent to Italian dictator Needs to Mussolini. He's a fact. So the Chicago was honoring a flight by a fascist politician, Italo Balbo, to the Century of Progress uh, World's Fair. 
So the Chicago hosted the World's Fair in 1933, and Balbo, the fascist politician, did a, like a flight around the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so I assume, he, I assume he probably started at Chicago, flew around the Atlantic, and came back to Chicago. This is a fascist politician doing this, Italio Balbo, and the gift was given by a fascist Roman Catholic dictator to the city of Chicago. It's just kind of like, huh, like that's kind of odd, don't you think? Like America, a country that espouses about like freedom and democracy and all that stuff. <laughs> Interesting, eh? <clears throat> Of course, Benito Mussolini had a Jesuit priest as his confessor, Father Tachi Venturi, S.J. So Chicago, as the archbishop is said here, it's a very big Catholic city. <laughs> uh, he says here, I'm just going to read that quote again. I have gained some idea of what a magnificent, big Catholic city Chicago is. Uh, since I've come here, I have visited uh, Joilet. And in that city, I visited uh, one of the patriarchal schools. It was the first time I'd seen a patriarchal school in the West. So this is what this is where he says here that America is going to rule the world. This is a fascinating quote here. The arch, and again, this, this quote is from this Archbishop James Quigley of Chicago. Again, his Archbishop Quigley Preparatory Seminary is now a U.S. Uh, is in the National Register of Historic Places in the United States. <laughs> uh, there it is. There. It's adjacent to Jesuit Loyola University Chicago's water tower. Would you look at that? Of course, it's adjacent to the Jesuit school. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, we see here. So America to rule the world. Within 20 years, this this is from Archbishop Quigley. Within, and they're saying this again in 1903, right when the Rockefeller Empire is taking over the U.S. economy and the world economy. It says within uh, with Standard Oil. Uh, within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. And again, Standard Oil was bottled up the Jesuit order. But continuing, within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. The West will dominate the country. And what I have seen of the Western patriarchal schools has proved that the generation which follows us will be exclusively Catholic. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. <laughs> Let's repeat that again. Uh, within 20 years, this country, the United States, is going to rule the world. Kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. The West will dominate the country, and what I have seen of the Western patriarchal schools has proved that the generations which follows us will be exclusively Catholic. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. It quickly continues. The people of the East do not know the importance of Chicago in the West. The Catholics know that Chicago is one of the great Catholic centers of the world. What I'm showing you here, like the, the, the gift from the Roman Mal Balbo monument, gift from fascist Roman Catholic dictator Benito Mussolini to the city of Chicago, proves that without a shadow of a doubt. Catholic is indeed, uh, that Chicago is indeed one of the great catholic centers of the world and she even on my website if you look at the architecture in downtown chicago it literally looks like ancient rome but uh actually look at the chicago city hall building look at this <laughs> there's a photo of a roman military fascist above the entrance of the chicago city hall building and right now you got the, the puppet Lori lightfoot in office <laughs> she's got her jesuit trained uh Advisor uh, Pierre Claussen, uh, her chief of staff in the background. She's just a puppet face, Lori Lightfoot. She's kind of a, uh, she's being sued in court right now, but she, she came out with that racist policy actually recently too, where she said she wasn't going to interview any white people. Uh, but she is being sued in court for that now, so hopefully she, she loses. But again, the, Je the Jesuits promote race, like the Jesuits are the masters of promoting racism and, you know, they've, they've created a whole racial sex uh, just look at how they the basque separatist movement in spain which the jesuits have been all over since like the 1860s being racial division racial strife racial tension uh, but you see, you see there's the fascists at the chicago city hall uh and i, I had a photo here of the cook county courthouse jim j edgar hoover after the one year after the murder of john f kennedy received his jesuit sword of ignatius loyola in chicago at Loyola University, which is adjacent to the Archbishop Quigley Seminary. 
There's a uh, Inquisitor J. Edgar Hoover receiving as Jesuit a replica of Ignatius's sword that he took in the battle when he went to uh, join in on the Crusades uh, to go to the Holy Lands to murder the heretics, the Turk and Muslim heretics at the time. <laughs> Uh, and so here's the photo here, photo of the Roman Empire resurrected in Chicago at the Cook County Criminal Courthouse. Fascists are present. And here you even see the ancient, like kind of like the SPQC. This is an ancient toad, uh, ode to the Roman Empire here. <laughs> it's amazing. Here's a Roman centurion holding two fascists. This is in the United States. This is why I call it Romerica. I call it Romerica for a reason. <laughs> this is the Cook County Criminal Courthouse. In ancient Rome in Chicago. So, uh, absolutely, Washington in the lap of Rome. Actually, I have that book up on my archive.org page. People should check that out. Written by a Protestant uh, priest, uh, James Fulton in 1888. That was a great book. Uh, so you see, Chicago is one of the great Catholic centers of the world. Uh, in 50 years, Chicago will be exclusively Catholic. <laughs> in 50 years, Chicago will be exclusively Catholic. I can think of like the Roman Catholic Daily Dynasty has they've had like three or four mayors of Chicago. The Daily Catholic crime family. Uh, this may be said of the Greater New York. So New York is now Roman Catholic, uh, and exclusively Catholic in fifty years, according to Archbishop Quigley. And the chain of big cities stretching across the continent to San Francisco. I'm going to repeat that. So he's saying every single big city in America will be exclusively Catholic. In 50 years, and he's saying this in 1903. So by 1953, he's saying every single big city in America will be exclusively Catholic. In 50 years, Chicago will be exclusively Catholic. The same may be said of Greater New York and the chain of big cities stretching across the continent to San Francisco. It has never forced itself on me this conviction, as it has since I have, <clears throat> as it has since I have been in Chicago. I am simply overcome by it. I am not telling you this to flatter you. I mean what I say. He says he, he says he means what he says. When I see what is going on, I am more than pleased. Nothing can stand against the church. <laughs> he says nothing can stand against the church. And this is where he makes a threat. He actually makes a veiled threat to politicians in Chicago. To, he says who, who would dare to challenge the church. He says, I would like to see the politician who would try to rule against the church in Chicago. His reign would be short indeed. You look at that. <laughs> Again, that, that's, a, that's a threat of violence. He, he says, I would like to see the politician who would try to rule against the church in Chicago. His reign would be short indeed. Actually, right at this time, too, I guess this was probably uh, a few years after. Let me get the exact date. But you had Roman Catholic Charles Joseph Bonaparte. Actually, this was five years later, you had the Roman Catholic Bureau of Investigation, which became the Federal Bureau of Investigation, formed uh, just five years after the statement by Archbishop Quigley. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to show you just, I'll show you the quote. I've read this on this stream I did with George on the FBI, but the founder of the Bureau of Investigation, Charles Joseph Bonaparte, the Attorney General, the Jesuit puppet Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, Charles Joseph Bonaparte was as Catholic as one could be. He actually viewed non-Catholics as heretics. This is the founder of the FBI. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to show you a quote from a biography on him. Uh, yeah, I wrote this years ago here, a couple years ago. Uh, <clears throat> you see here, the FBI, before adopting the current name, was known as the BOI, Bureau of Investigation. The founder of the BOI was its sendant of Jesuit puppet Napoleon Bonaparte, devout, a devout Catholic named Charles Joseph Bonaparte. So here's the quote here from, this is a biography called Joseph Bonaparte, His Life in Public Services by Joseph, Joseph, Bishop Joseph Buckland. He says, his Charles, jo his Charles Joseph Bonaparte's militant loyalty to the Catholic Church was exhibited on all occasions. <laughs> and here's actually a quote from Joseph Bonaparte where he's talking about uh, how he can better align his dogma with the papal dogma of infallibility. This is just, it's incredible. Like, this history is totally occulted. The United States is 
the sword arm of the Roman Catholic Church. They have an archdiocese for the military services in the United States military. The Pentagon building I showed in the last video on Rockefeller was modeled off of diagrams from Jesuits in the 1600s. And he had a Knight of Malta, Jesuit-trained architect, John McShane, design the Pentagon. Uh, and here he, call, he calls, uh, at the very end, he calls this um, a guy, a, a doctor, a, a professor at Harvard who wasn't a Catholic here, Dr. Peabody, he calls him a heretic because he's not Catholic. And again, this is the guy who founded the FBI. He's calling people who aren't Catholic heretics. <laughs> okay, so just for some context. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> you see here Archbishop Quigley threatening with violence politicians who would challenge the church in Chicago. And this is right at, as Standard Oil Company was taking over the U.S. economy. Uh, continuing here, uh, this encouragement for sodality, sodality. This sodality has the power. And again, it wasn't just like J.P. Morgan was a uh, knight of St. Maurice and Lazarus. J.P. Morgan, another rock. He was probably the closest robber baron at that time to matching the wealth of John D. Rockefeller. J.P. Morgan was a Roman Catholic knight of St. Maurice and Lazarus. Let's look up guy. Thomas Fortune Ryan was known as one of the richest men in Wall Street at this time. This guy was essentially a lay Jesuit, king of the tobacco uh, industry. You see it right on his Wikipedia. Ryan was perhaps the greatest benefactor to the Roman Catholic Diocese of Richmond. <laughs> Just look at that. Robert Barrett, Thomas Fortune, Ryan, American Tobacco Insurance and Transportation Magnet. And I've just, the, Nicholas Frederick Brady, another one. His grandson was the uh, Treasury Secretary in the Reagan administration. Uh, this is him here, Nicholas F. Brady, known for the Brady Plan. Uh, but his uh, descendant, uh, Nicholas Frederick. Right here, Nicholas Frederick Brady, New York City businessman, philanthropist, who is the first American to receive the Roman Catholic Church honor, the Supreme Order of Christ. This guy was a director of over 50 corporations. His, uh, when he died, his wife, uh, at the time, the Duchess Brady, gifted his whole estate to the Jesuits. So this is the point being, like the robber baron class, like, what it's just, it's the, this is modern day papal black nobility. That's all it is. Um, and here it is there. Brady Estate goes to Jesuits <laughs> from 1937. <clears throat> again, so this is a cult of history. The Rockefellers, and again, they, they often get, because they're like officially Baptist, they, there's propaganda that gets put out that Protestants are controlling American capitalism, you know, which is an absolute joke. Um, and again, just look at the robber barons. The founder of the Anaconda Copper Company uh, was it Daly. I'm just going to pull this up here. Another massive. It was Edmund Paris's book that, um, <clears throat> and the Vatican against Europe. Where he said that's how the Vatican entered into the JK, JP Morgan Empire during World War One was through the Anaconda Copper Company. But who is the founder of the Anaconda Copper Company? One of the biggest massive monopolistic cartel capitalist firms in the United States at this time. Uh, oh, who was it? Uh, oh, it was a Roman Catholic, Marcus Daly. And Daly's sister, Catherine Daly Rudden, gifted her estate to a Catholic priest. <laughs> First president of U.S. Steel, Charles Schwab, Roman Catholic. Schwab then founded the Bethlehem Ship Stealing, Shipbuilding and Steel Company. And you see the Jesuitism just in the name, Bethlehem, the supposed birthplace, or, or that's where Jesus is said to have been born. <clears throat> again, you see sacrilegious Jesuits at it again. <laughs> but all of the, again, the robber, it's just, uh, it's amazing. Just, I'm just bringing this up because like, the, the robber baron class gets uh, kind of smeared as being pr Protestant uh, to many historians, uh, according to, to uh, many historians, which is uh, completely ridiculous. It just shows that they're either covering for the church or they're just ignorant. So again, this information is very occulted. This is how Quigley ends off his grand statement here. This sodality has the power to accomplish much toward the advancement of the church. Your opportunity lies in the line of the help which you may find it in your power to give to your pastors. Unless some rare occasion should present itself, there is no way in which you may directly aid me. 
but the help you may give me through the organization I am in need of. Uh, it is by this and through the saving of your own souls that you can do the greatest good for the church. Uh, and again, I'm just going to read this quote one more time, just because it's very, uh, it's very important just to understand the kind of the context of what's going on today. This is Archbishop Quigley in 1903. And then I'm going to wrap it up after this. Check out some of the comments. He said, "Within 20 years, this country is going to rule the world. The United States kings and emperors will soon pass away, and the democracy of the United States will take their place. The West will dominate the country." And what I've seen of the Western patriarchal schools has proved that the generation which follows us will be exclusively Catholic. Speaking of another Catholic Robert Barron that I'm just forgetting to mention right now, he had John Francis Keeney, the founder of Monsanto, was a Knight of Malta and Roman Catholic. <laughs> He's born in the Catholic city of Chicago, which is like that. <laughs> John Francis Keeney, another Roman Catholic Robert Barron. Founding for the Monsanto Chemical Works Company in St. Louis, Missouri, where the Jesuits have their Jesuit St. Louis University. And Monsanto has been poisoning the masses ever since. Taking over, again, trying taking over the world economy via cartel capitalistic uh, strategies, predatory pricing, so forth. Um, like, there's a great, there's, I can think of a documentary, The Seeds of Destruction. A uh, good documentary on Monsanto, but again, no one really brings up how it was a Roman Catholic who was connected with the Knights of Malta <clears throat> in the political hierarchy of the Vatican, John Francis Keeney, who founded Monsanto. That doesn't get brought up. <clears throat> Quickly says again, I'm just going to say when the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. You know, that's coming from an archbishop, so <laughs> important history. And again, I recommend you check out this article. This is from the original Chicago Tribune, 1903. See, Tuesday, May 5th, 1903. Um, let me check out the chat here. Absolutely, Peter. The medical indulgences will be your carbon footprint. And I think that the BAP in this new inquisition, that yes, you're it's a good carbon footprint will be your medical your indulgence and your uh baptism will be your covid vaccine your roman catholic baptism is now the covid vaccine pope francis is one of the biggest advocates of and actually it, it, it's just amazing how this works so he, right before the g7 conference he had pope francis come out and say that oh the rich countries in the world can't be hoarding the vaccines everyone must be given a vaccine Pope Francis says that, and then a week later at the G7, they donate, what, like 10 billion doses to the world? <laughs> Literally doing exactly what the Pope told them to do at the G7. It, it's just interesting how that works out. The Pope says something, and then the puppets at the G7 echo exactly what the Pope says just a few days later. Huh. <laughs> uh. Napoleon's brother-in-law was emperor of Mexico, Maximilian's. Oh, great information. Well, I know, Dad, that was the, uh, that's very interesting history in Mexico. Uh, Napoleon III, he dispatched a uh, Hasburg. Uh, I believe it was Maximilian. He dispatched emperor Maximilian of Hasburg to install him as the puppet of Mexico. But uh, Benito Juarez uh, put that treason down. And to this day, the, the fascists and Roman Catholics and the Jesuits that despise Benito Juarez, that they hate him. Because <laughs> he, he very greatly checked the power of the church in Mexico, and he put down that insurrection by Emperor Maximilian. Uh, yeah, that's it. that gets talked about even this spent French intervention into Mexico. So you had... Napoleon III dispatch a Hasburg, uh, Maximilian of Hasburg, Archduke of Austria, and he was he was to be installed as the puppet of Mexico. But uh, war has war has stamped that out. No, that that's a good point. Great, good history there, Amber Lance. Thanks for the comment. Uh, yeah, Jeremy said Florida is Catholic. Absolutely, the first settlement in the. In the United States, I believe, was St. Augustine. You can tell with the name St. Augustine, named after a Roman saint, a uh, doctor of the church, Augustine. 
St. Augustine, I believe, was the first settlement in the United States. And this is when the Roman Catholic Spaniards uh, were colonizing the United States. And of course, California used to be a, a Spanish colony, Catholic Spanish colony as well. And you can, that's evident in all of the names of the cities. Like Los Angeles is a reference to the Virgin Mary, the queen of uh, the Lady of Angels, which is the Virgin. Uh, absolutely, Pedro. Uh, lay the he said, lay the protocols, the Masonic Creed, and goals, and the ten planks of communism, and you'll see that they are one and the same. Understand that the protocols were penned by a Jesuit. Absolutely, and I actually I linked that to I found the exact copy. Uh, it was kind of hard to on the last video on the Rockefellers. It was a, to, I had to do a lot of work to find this, but I found a copy of the Protocols of Zion where they actually say that the Jesuits are the only group of men that compares to us. <laughs> so cl clearly it was penned by a Jesuit. And again, I check out Leo H. Lehman's book Behind the Dictators for historical context and who, why the Jesuits penned the Protocols of Zion and what subsequently happened afterwards with the Roman Catholic Inquisitions of World War II with Hitler, Franco, Stalin, <clears throat> Mussolini, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I think that's all for this one, guys. It's Archbishop Quigley of Chicago in 1903 said, when the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. And that's what we are seeing today unfold on this, the geopolitical stage. But uh, you know, thanks for the comments, guys. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll see you on the next video.